Hey, welcome back to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's now time for Off the Press. And I guess Mr. Chris Wanda joins us now. Good morning, sir. Thanks for being here. Thank you very much for having me. Good morning. All right. Let's begin this morning with the Daily Independent newspaper. The headline reads, Banks Boards Jittery as CBN Moves to Clamp Down on Insider Abuse. Analysts ask Apis Bank to publish street stress test on banks wants DMBs to improve on corporate governance disclosure. Above the headline on the Daily Independence, shoot on site against Igbo youths call for another genocide. And that's according to Ohanez Indigo. NEF spokesman says Buhari should be impeached if he can't secure us. Below the headline on the Daily Independence, troops eliminate top bandit commanders, 48 others. FG considers 223 building components firms for social housing projects. Abdul Salami Abubakar denies link with bandits and terrorists. COVID-19, FG reintroduces restriction on mass gathering. PDP demands Amechi Usman's sack over MPA's unremitted 165 billion naira. Reps Minority Caucus ask EFCC to probe Hadiza Bala Usman. Peter Obi alleges plots to link him with Southeast violence. And lastly, on the Daily Independence, Song Wolu gets Lagosians back in to tackle security challenges. All right, let's uh, see what we can find on the Nation newspapers this morning. The big one there says, uh, Southern governors to take crucial decisions on insecurity. Delta to host Pali today. IG plans uh, synergy, uh, synergy rather, with military. 11-man panel to probe NPA activities on Dabala Usman. And presidency confirms attempted raid on uh, Gambari's house. 1,200 to benefit from Quara interest-free loans. Um, all right, uh, it also says, yeah, Deboye's son didn't die, but sleeping, says uh, Widow. Don't understand that. Why COVID-19 restrictions are back, and that's from the federal government. Also on the nation this morning, Song Wo Lu gets uh, full back into tackle security challenges. We can also find here, um, Wednesday and Thursday, of course, uh, are holidays. That's um, the big ones on the nation newspapers this morning. On the Punch newspaper, deadly COVID-19 variants. Experts warn as FG restricts gatherings revives curfew, bans nightclubs and others. Government says worship centers shouldn't exceed 50% capacity, revives 12 midnight to 4 a.m. curfew. Learn from India's predicament, virologist advises Nigerians and Tomori backs federal government. Above the headline on the Punch newspaper, Nigeria's fintech revenue to hit $543 million by 2022, and that's according to a report. Subsidy removal advice wrong. Implementation suicidal, says Nupeng. Presidency confirms attempted burglary of Gambari's villa residence. Nigeria's economy is still fragile despite exiting recession. Buhari's advices. Below the headline on the Punch newspaper, Amechi inaugurates panel to probe alleged MPA unremitted cash. IPOB denies planned attack on Lagos. Police order probe. Quara floats 900 million naira interest-free loans for 1,200 young entrepreneurs. Family kicks as murder suspect dies in police custody. Federal government declares Wednesday, Thursday holidays and Nasrada predicts moon sighting. Minister leads delegation to Ghana over Nigerian traders ordeal. And we see pictures here, St. Lagos State Environmental uh, Special Officers uh, Unit and Tax Force at the Igomu under bridge. And um, they're basically doing a three-day removal of uh, illegal structures and uh, vehicles there. That's the picture we're seeing there on the Punch newspaper this morning. All right, and now on the Nigerian Tribune, 
Security breach at Buhari's Chief of Staff Asorok residence. Presidency confirms burglars made foolish attempt. Arrested helicopter. ACF calls for full investigation. Abdus Salami denies any link with bandits. And also Buhari should be removed if he can't guarantee security. Baba Ahmed, and that's a Northern Elders Forum spokesman. We're going to be having a conversation with uh, him this morning. COVID-19, security personnel to enforce use of face masks. Um, it also says there on, uh, okay, well, on public transport, the federal government reinstates uh, restrictions on mass gatherings, event centers, nightclubs, and the likes. Uh, we can also find on the Tribune this morning, or your government promises to pay salaries and allowances of SAC local government chairman and councillors. Another INEC office set ablaze. Also, gunmen abduct many in Katsina Mosque. A police rescued 30. Buhari moves to resolve Ghana-Nigeria trade conflicts, sends delegations. And also, Amechi inaugurates panel to probe policies and contracts done by Hadiza since 2016. Uh, we can also see here NLC to ground Kaduna from May 16th over workers' sack. And uh, Lagos holds security summit issues 12-point resolution. That's uh, most of the stories we're taking this morning. Uh, Mr. Chris Wandu, good morning once again. Thanks for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. All right. Uh, I guess we can start from the attempted, uh, like it's been described, or the burglary at uh, uh, Gambari's residence. Pretty embarrassing. Uh, what do you think? Uh, very, very embarrassing um, uh, for uh, the hoodlums or arm robbers or whatever you call them to have found their way to Asarok is very soon uh, because Asarok is the seat of power uh, we are the president um, resides and um, my fair share of knowledge of Asarok is that uh, you have about um, I think about four gates into Asarok um, so how do we we are able to make their way into um, Asarok and uh, even with um, apart from the gates there are also four, about three or four levels of uh, movement before you can get to the inner uh, inner palace, as I use it, uh, of, the, of, um, of the villa. So the day jump the fence, which is impossible, um, because that place is a cordon of security, appliances, and all the rest of them. So that, to me, is a um, uh, level of a uh, security breach. And then to get as far as to the home of the chief of staff, um, to the president is as good as getting to the president, because the chief of staff is the last point of command, and before you see the president. So um, I don't know how they were able to do it, and um, we are the caught in the arts uh, that are not told. So um, that is a very tough one, and that also shows that uh, the level of insecurity. If Asorok, the seat of power, is not secured, then you, can, you cannot imagine what happened to the rest of us. So um, I think those in charge of security uh, in Nasarok should be questioned. Uh, let, let me also possible. bring in this. this that should uh, be a rejig of the representative. Yeah, let me also bring in this quick angle to this. Um, I'm just seeing a statement now from someone, and it's asking, you know, is it important that we know if this happened with people from the outside? or from insiders? Because anyone who can get that level of access might have insiders that help them out. So, so sh should that be scary for the presidency? And should that also tell, you know, that there are people inside Asorok that cannot be trusted with present security? Yes. Um, I don't know if you know, you have the knowledge of uh, Asorok as it were. My, I've been to Asorok several times. And also know that it's not just the seat of power that's in Asoro. There are several uh, parastatals in Asoro. I know that even EFCC used to be around that. There are so many NBC, EFCC, and uh, some of them, some of those um, um, parastatals uh, were used to be in Asoro. But as I said, Asoro, there is Asoro and there also Asoro. So there is outer Asoro and the, the inside Asoro. Um, because um, the presidential villa, you have to cross about four. Uh, level of uh, security before you can get to the actual presidential. But within the uh, between Asso Rock also, I also know that some people um, that are not working in the presidency are, are living in Asso Rock. So I don't know. Um, so whether it's an insider's job or from people that came from outside, but for them to be able to do that, they must have had access into um, Asso Rock, either as uh, people living there 
or people that came from outside. And um, were they armed? Were they able to be armed to be able to enter um, Arsenal? That is, is what is more something. And uh, that's why I said that the security actors within the villa should be rigid and the investigation should be carried out thoroughly to be able to find out where this book came from. And it could have been worse. Don't know what they had. If they had other motives, um, um, and uh, they could have um, done a lot of damage in Asurok. And um, because what's the idea? You don't know what the person have. Suppose the person have a, a, a propeller, or if you understand what I mean, those high caliber arms and the rest of them, they can shoot into the villa and the rest of them. That is a serious security breach. All right. We should be investigated and should okay. be. So, um, but the uh, government show has just this morning has deleted that tweet. Um, that tweet, if you are aware, he has deleted that tweet. But he made that tweet uh, acknowledging the um, that uh, invasion. All right. Moving away from security matters to well, still health security, more specifically. On the Punch News paper, there's a story here about the COVID-19 variant and the federal government. You know imposing a curfew from 12 midnight to 4 a.m. and restricting movement, you know, banning nightclubs, you know, and other public gatherings in the country, as well as, you know, cutting down the, you know, crowd to 50%, you know, of, of total capacity. But the, the thing here is that many Nigerians seem to, Ms. Anwandu, seem to have the impression that there's, you know, no more COVID-19 in Nigeria. You know, but with this new curfew now, it, it might jolt Nigeria back to reality, you know, in some ways. But do you think a curfew is enough to create that social distance to prevent the spread of COVID-19? Or do you think what Nigeria needs to, to prevent being in the situation where India is right now is a total lockdown? I don't know. Um, <laughs> I, I, I don't know the reason for doing that. Um, my feeling is that when you say there's a coffee, it doesn't mean that it's only the night that the coronavirus uh, moves around. Uh, when you lose coffee between 12 and uh, 4 a.m., does it mean that it is the, the coronavirus uh, moves <laughs> in the night and goes to sleep during the day? Uh, for me, I don't think that is necessary. Uh, talking about that. Mr. Wandu, we seem to have lost you there. All right. I th think we've lost uh, sound from Chris Wandu. We'll have to reconnect with him um, and continue this conversation. And good point. Um, does COVID only come out at night? Um, of course. Or does it, of course, exist in the, in the daytime also? I think, you know, there is maybe some way to tackle the, you know, uh, the people going to nightclubs and having night events and things like that. But if there is already um, a ban on nine clubs, and I don't know why there is a curfew, you know, and uh, why there's a restriction of movement uh, to 4 a.m. Uh, there's people who've complained about flights leaving as early as 7 a.m., so people need to leave at 4 or leave earlier than 4 to get to the airport, you know, which I feel there's still enough time by 4 a.m. Uh, to get to the airport or, or whatnot. But the government has, well, will probably have to give a, a clearer picture of why there's a four, 12, uh, midnight to 4 a.m. curfew mm -hmm. um, and what that is, you know, hoping to achieve. Yes. And there's all the all, other things, you know. So let's not let's not have the conversation as you know the the firm the curfew is the only um, you know COVID nineteen um, guideline that has been put in place. It's not just the curfew. There's also uh, limiting movements. There's shutdown of gyms and nightclubs and cinemas and the likes. Um, there's also um, reducing number of people in churches and the likes to fifty people. Chris Wando, welcome back. Thank you very much. So, right. um, but it's not just the coffee alone. Yes. We have also the restriction um, when it comes to gym, um, uh, places, uh, event centers have been shut down and um, gatherings not more than 50. Um, those are part of the protocols being put in place. But for me, the most important thing is that how far have we gone with our vaccination? Because that seems to be, has totally stopped. And um, so many millions of Nigerians who are willing to get themselves vaccinated have not um, been vaccinated. Um, the last count, we had only about 3.9 or 4 million doses shared into two. That is about 2 million averagely um, Nigerians. Out of 200 million Nigerians that we get uh, vaccinated. I got, I've gotten the first job. I'm expecting my second job in about a few weeks' time for me to go for my second job. But there are so many Nigerians who are willing to have um, this vaccination and they don't have it. And what is the government been done, uh, is doing about it with the, what is happening in India? 
Don't forget that India is a serious challenge now, and India in the past have been able to provide us with some few hundreds of um, thousands of um, vaccines. Um, and there's no place, um, most countries are not um, um, giving out or selling uh, vaccines now because they are also in gravity. We should see what is happening in Brazil and other parts of, of the world. So, uh, Bex, let's see how it goes. Um, the government, um, the, um, the authorities must have gotten their reasons, uh, have their reason for the bet. My issue of the, my problem is that of social distancing. We don't observe social distancing, and a lot of people are not using their mask. In fact, people have practically discarded their masks. If you're everywhere you go in Nigeria, you have to anybody putting on masks. And um, let's see how they are going to be able to break this and um, moving forward. All right, Mr. Wanju, another story um, here. It's on the Nation newspaper. It says 11 man panel to probe NPA, that's the Nigeria Port Authority, activities under Bala Usman. So there's been lots of controversy regarding the story. Recall that um, she's first of all been suspended you know, since last Thursday. And there's an APC caucus here seeking action, saying there's, there needs to be the involvement of an anti graft agency like the EFCC. Um, you know, that 1.5 you know, billion naira was in, trillion naira was involved, and that there's allegations that she had, you know, reduced, you know, the amounts that, you know, Dangote should pay, you know, for what he clears at the port. And they're basically saying that there's lots of, you know, irregularities with her policies while as, you know, boss of the MPA. So they're now calling for an investigation. Your thoughts on this, Mr. Wandu? Um, I don't think it was the APC caucus. I think it's the PDP. The PDP. The I minority. beg your Yes, yes, it's the PDP, the minority party has a representative that wants to grow. Um, but as it's where it's also within the realms of allegations and um, an accused is deemed to be innocent until he or she must have proved um, uh, to have committed the offense. So I think, which, yes, um, so for me, it's still uh, within the realms of accusation. Uh, an 11 man uh, panel has been instituted to look into that. And um, they've been inaugurated by the minister. Yes, the former uh, or the suspended MP is also fighting back with certain information and rest of that. I think everybody should wait for the outcome of that uh, panel. And my problem is that uh, the way we do this is uh, set up panels at the end of it or nothing comes out of it. Don't forget the one of NDIC. I'm sure you still remember that we have yeah. practically gone to sleep with that. NDDC. Uh, yes, 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 NDDC, yes. That we are practically gone to sleep with that. Yes, the um, president also set up a, a forensic uh, investigation panel to look into that. Um, coupled with that, of uh, with the, you remember the drama that happened off your mic and door on for your mic, put on your mic and uh, painting and non painting. And the end of it, all, what came out of it is like we are home and dry. So there have been several investigations in the past that we don't even enter. What we see is just the beginning, and we don't get to see what happens at the end of it all. And whatever recommendations made, we are not implemented. I hope this will be part of another one. Um, the MPA is one of our cash cow. Uh, if you take away the oil, you take off um, away FIRS, um, and that of customs, um, um, re revenue generation, MPA stand within the, uh, the big five, six um, organizations that uh, we get um, uh, remittances from. Um, so we shouldn't let this be like what it used to be. It should be a holistic um, investigation, devoid of any political learning and the rest of them. To make sure that um, whoever is copied who is but book. All right. There's there's also um, you know a question I want to ask. Uh, why do we keep going through the route of setting up panels when we have the ICPC, we have the EFCC, we have uh, um, you know forensic um, agencies that can do a proper audit of their funds and of their finances in the last couple of years. Uh, so why are we setting up a panel? Isn't isn't that just you know wasting time? I agree to, with you. It's wasting time. Uh, most often than not, even after the panel must have submitted it, or you come to see that another subcommittee or panel will be set up to look into the recommendation Fine. of that panel. You know that's how we go <laughs> in this country. So, but I also a panel can do a job more quickly. I believe than the graph agencies. Don't forget, they have so many things on their table. They have so many things that they are investigating. And that um, EFCC, for one, uh, I feel that EFCC is a bit, as a, a bit um, has gone overboard 
Um, it's not focusing fully in the score mandate. They are engaging in so many other things that personally, uh, I think it's taking so much of their time. When you go and pick some boys, uh, you see that it's important. Are you a good boy? So you go and pick hundreds of boys and most of them, prosecution and the rest of them. They don't have the capacity. And if you just forget, don't forget, a few days, a few weeks ago, the Inspector General of Police withdrew several senior officers from EFCC. Those are part of the people that help them in their investigation. So, do they have the capacity to be able to run through all this? ICPC in this, uh, um, is, is, uh, for me, um, it's neither here nor there. So, if there is a need to set up a, a panel um, that can equally wrap up this, I, 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 for, uh, for a panel, you can give a mandate and a time frame for them to finish. You can say within two weeks, within three weeks, within four weeks, and they get that wrapped up. But if you're looking for graph agencies, they might continue investigation for a whole year or two. And at the end of it, so that one, one will stretch. But ordinarily, that's what they're supposed to do. Even the police, don't forget that the police um, yes. is also had a mandate. Uh, it, that is a fraud unit within the Nigerian police that's supposed to handle issues like this. You, you remember vividly, yes. The yes. police have that uh, mandate too. And, and they could, could have been engaged. I don't know what they have been, whether they have been used or whether they have been utilized. But it's not just the, the ICPC, not just the FCC. The police has that mandate. And they have a special unit that investigates such. So I believe that if you can be able to get them to be able to get this job as, as quickly done quickly as possible, well, all well and good. But the panel, as a man, you cannot give the police a, a time frame of two weeks to submit their report because they probably, probably they will not be able to finish their investigation. But the panel has a mandate within which to be able to do this, and that is well, what they do 100 percent, and they come up with. Remember, if, if if the and apologies for dragging this so too long, if the if the graft agencies, the, the, the actual graft agency or anti graft agencies that have been set up including the police, um, need a specific amount of time. They need to investigate for two months or for one month. Um, I'm not sure how long it takes. Maybe because of their inadequacies or because it, that's the time that a, a proper investigation is required, um, um, or a proper investigation will be carried out. Then how does a panel finish in two weeks? And what do we hope to, to achieve from a panel in two weeks? If the graphic agencies will take six months. Well, I'm not... I'm using that. I'm using two weeks as his time frame. I, I don't know the time frame it was given, but what I'm saying is that for the panel, that is the sole job they want. To, they're going to do 100. Yeah. percent If we put that time, 100. Yeah, percent well, Why? I'm, why I'm the, asking is the, because the officers you are going to get from EFCC. Or... Yeah. Well, why I'm asking is because if we need to do a proper uh, job, then of course these anti-graft agencies, you know, should be involved, and uh, not a panel that is that should be given a time frame um, or whatnot. Not a panel that we also trust has people that are certified and, and, and qualified to do a proper uh, forensic um, uh, investigation into uh, financial fraud. But we'll, 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 we'll um, see. It's another opportunity, just, I believe. Let's just quickly come in there. It's yeah. just a short one. I, I, what I rather suggest is that whether we can invite some members here the FCC or ICC into that, that, uh, that book panel, you understand what I'm trying to say? So if you can embed people, some officers from EFCC, some officers from ICPC, and others from the fraud unit of police, add them to the part then that make a more good investigation. Uh, but the members of this panel, I don't know who they are. I don't know that they are coming from and rest of them. So it's mm. very, very tough to All right. Be, uh, thinking to their, uh, their time frame or their mandate. But let's just see what, has, uh, what happens. Okay, well, it's another opportunity for the government to, of course, uh, show its... Uh, um, uh, um, stands, you know, with regards to uh, corruption and fighting corruption. Yeah, there there yeah. has been Babache Lawal, there has been the NDDC, like you mentioned, there's been numerous, you know, different, um, you know, uh, opportunities. So let's see how this one turns out um, and yeah. uh, how it plays out. But thanks anyway for joining us this morning, Chris Wandu. Thank uh, you. And thanks for your time and for sharing your thoughts with us. Thank you very much. Do have a nice day. Absolutely. Stay with us this uh, beautiful Tuesday morning. Uh, we, of course, have taken a short break. When we come back, we're sharing with you what happened on this day in history, the 11th of May, many years ago. We'll be back.